Those are the silent commons. I think it's a really good pool of cards in general. A lot of very good ways to deal damage. You know, reflecting on this card pool, I'm actually surprised at just how few block options there are. Only four of these cards say block, unless you count the Piercing Whale. Hey, 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 uh, YouTube. Baylor here in the big cozy chair. And today I want to talk about the Silent in Slay the Spire. Specifically, the common cards of the Silent and which ones you should take and add to your deck in Act 1. The Silent has 19 different common cards, and these are the cards that you're most likely going to see in your uh, first couple of card rewards. The goal here is to talk a little bit about each one, um, describe when they're a good take in the first act of the game, and to help you evaluate whether you should upgrade those common cards as well. Essentially a little guide to taking and upgrading your early game cards as the silent. If you like this video, by the way, I encourage you to let me know in the comments below what is your favorite common card to take in Act 1 as the silent. All right, let's dive on into these. We'll go right from the top. I might be grouping some of these as I discuss them, since some of the silence commons are fairly similar, but starting with Acrobatics. I really like this card in the mid to late game. It's a draw three, discard one, great for shuffling and cycling through the deck, and has an upgrade for one more card drawn, making it a draw four, which is some serious power um, to get through the deck. Compare this with something like Skim on the Defect, and it allows you to cycle the deck even more effectively, cycling being to shuffle your draw pile back into your, shuffle your discard pile, excuse me, back into your draw pile and draw through again so that you can play your cards over and over. This is not something you can really take much advantage of in the early game, and starting out in Act 1 when you've only got uh, 3 energy, this card isn't really worth it, so I don't like this one at the start of the game. It also penalizes you against the Gremlin Knob, one of those deadly Act 1 elites. I think Acrobatics is awesome in the mid to late game, but it's not something you should take at the start. Backflip, however, is card draw that you can get a little bit more away with, because Backflip comes packaged with block alongside. 5 block and draw 2 is going to let you get back to your upgraded cards more frequently. Uh, it's going to let you draw through enemy status cards, which can make it really important against uh, either the Hexaghost or the Slime Boss in Act 1. And it's another block which can help you against the Guardian boss. So I like Backflip as a little bit of consistency and block against the bosses of Act 1, and it's pretty good in the shorter combats of the Act as well, but where Backflip will really hurt is in the Elite fights. Um, specifically, again, the Gremlin Knob, who punishes skills pretty harshly. Silent really does have to watch out for Gremlin Knob a whole lot, and we'll get to that with the common attacks. But I do like Backflip a lot once you've established your damage, so maybe not ideal as your first card, I think, but Backflip is pretty dang good once you've got a damage card or two. The upgrade for 3 block is pretty solid, and I like it in the, the mid-game or in Act 1 if you've got great damage already and you want to invest in your block. Backflip's a pretty good upgrade, but I wouldn't put it up there with the, you know, with as a huge priority. Bane. Bane's an interesting one. This card does 14 damage for 1 energy, but only if the enemy is poisoned, which is a pretty hard condition to meet, and when you're first being offered this card, it's relatively unlikely that you've got poison already. Now I do like Bane quite a lot if you already have a deadly poison, or a poison stab, or even in some cases if you found a poison potion that can enable you to take a Bane card and have it work really well in the one fight you need it in. But where Bane really shines is this upgrade. The upgrade on Bane makes each of the two hits do three additional damage. So that's six additional damage if the enemy's poisoned for a total of 20. 20 damage for one energy is enormous in the first act and makes Bane into an insanely good uh, immediate damage card that'll just bust through elites as long as you can get the poison down. If you have poison and you see Bane, I do recommend taking it, I do recommend upgrading it. Um, but you do need to, as the game goes forward, pick up another couple of poison starters to make sure that the Bane is reliable. If you haven't given this card a chance, I do recommend giving it a, giving it a try, even at 
only 10 damage if you upgrade this. Uh, just 10 damage for one energy is still quite nice if you can't get the second hit to trigger. Although, of course, some of the other silent attacks are going to be a lot better at that point. But it's worth a shot, I think. Give it a try. Blade Dance and Cloak and Dagger. We'll talk about both of these around the same time. Both are Shiv generating common cards. Blade Dance was recently buffed on the 2.2 patch for PC. It's now three Shivs or four upgraded. Previously it was two and then upgrades to three. Whereas Cloak and Dagger gives you a little bit of block and then one or two Shivs. Of the two of these, Blade Dance is by far the more offensive of the two, especially now that it had that one additional Shiv buff, doing 12 damage or 16 upgraded. It's quite a bit of raw numerical output, and that's kind of compensated for by the awkwardness of this card. You have to have room in your hand, um, you have to be fighting an enemy that doesn't penalize you for playing too many cards or for playing skills. Against, for example, the Guardian, each shiv that you play will activate the Sharp Hide ability and you'll take return damage, so Blade Dance can be pretty awkward there. But I really like Blade Dance and Cloak and Dagger both against the Slime Boss, and I like them both any time you have a relic that improves attacks, pretty much. So any, any one relic that makes your attacks better, be that a Vajra for plus one strength, a Shuriken Kunai, or Ornamental Fan, any kind of ninja, quote-unquote, relic, uh, a Nunchaku giving you energy for playing too many attacks, an ink bottle giving you card draw for playing a certain number of cards, any one effect like that makes these a good take. And if you, have, if you have two or more such effects going on, then these cards become very, very valuable very quickly. So I think Blade Dance is a really good pickup in the early game, in part because there's so many different ways it can get empowered by the relics and potions and uh, powers that you're going to find as you go through the game. Dagger Spray is one of my favorite uh, damage commons for the silent. It does 4 damage to all enemies twice, which is a little bit of decent area effect. It's the only multi-hit attack that the Silent has in the common pool, so it's the first and most likely AoE option that you're going to be presented. I really like this card against the Slime Boss, because, you know, once that, once that boss splits in two, you're going to need damage that can hit everybody. It's a bit less impactful against uh, Guardian or Hexagos, but it's also quite good in the hard pool encounters of the Act. There's that five Slimes encounter and that four Gremlins encounter in the Act to keep an eye on. If you do take a Dagger Spray, note that it has an amazingly good upgrade, and I think this becomes a very, very high priority upgrade if you take one, because it does four additional, two per hit, to all enemies on the field, which makes it much better than, say, the Quick Slash upgrade, which gets four additional damage to one enemy. Four additional damage to all enemies is a very good upgrade, and something that will help keep this card relevant in the mid to late game, too. I'm gonna take a quick moment to talk about uh, Dagger's Throw, Flying Knee, and Quick Slash all at once here, because those are all very similar common attacks for Silent. They all do approximately the same amount of damage. Um, 9 upgraded 12, 8 upgraded 11 on Flying Knee, and then Quick Slash, excuse me, has the, uh, has the best one here, with 8 upgraded to 12. So it's got a plus 4 instead of the plus 3 of the others, but essentially all three of these cards are immediate front load damage with a secondary effect. For Dagger Throw, it's draw a card, discard a card. For Quick Slash, it's draw one. And for Flying Knee, it's gain an energy next turn. Exactly which one of these that you're going to want as a kind of a tool in your tool belt in the later game is going to vary. But right at the start of the game, they're all pretty similar in their utility, with maybe Flying Knee having a slight edge, thanks to letting you play an additional strike or defend on the following turn. But which, regardless of which of the three of these that you take, what you care about on... Act 1 is the immediate damage that it offers, and how that's going to help you defeat your elites or your early encounters. They all do a perfectly fine job of it, and so I consider all three of these cards very, very similar. They're great takes. I do highly recommend picking up damage commons on the Silence, as the Silent does have the lowest damage of all characters with her starting deck. 
So picking up one or two of these, again, there are, I'm e pretty equally happy to see all of them. I like Dagger Throw in particular because it lets you start specking into some of the uh, discard interactions. This can make a Hovering Kite easier to take. This can make a Reflex or Tactician or Sneaky Strike or Eviscerate easier to take uh, in a way that the Flying Knee and the Quick Slash won't. I'll talk about the two poison options at the same time as well. Next up is Deadly Poison, a skill that applies 5 or upgraded 7 poison, and a Poison Stab, which is a little bit less poison for some immediate damage in the form of an attack. 6 damage and 3 poison are upgraded to 8 and 4. These are both really good single target damage options for the Silent. Poison is Silent's natural uh, scaling mechanic, what I like to call it which is to say that it allows the Silent to increase her damage per turn against a single target quite effectively. Each time you play the Poison card, the Poison total of the enemy increases, so as long as you're able to redraw it quickly enough. And so taking one or two Poison cards can be a really effective way of dealing with big single target enemies. Uh, the ones that Silent fears the most in Act 1 are going to be the Lagavulin Elite, who has a huge health pool and debuffs your strength, making it hard to do damage normally. The Hexaghost boss, who has a huge health pool and uh, requires you to kill them pretty quickly. And the Guardian boss, who you've got some more time with, but similarly has a huge health pool. Poison cards are great against all three of these targets. Poison cards are not so great against the Slime boss in Act 1, however, because the Slime boss splits in half at half health, which removes all their debuffs, including Poison so it's difficult to accumulate poison against the Slime Boss. That said, I do like Poison Stab as a take against Slime Boss because it's uh, a lot more immediate damage. Poison Stab is also better against the Gremlin Knob since it's not doing damage in the form of a skill, and in general, it's offering less total damage than Deadly Poison. I like to think of the damage output from Poison cards over three or so turns, because that's usually about how long you get. To, to let your poison do the damage is three turns. That makes the upgrade on Deadly Poison really significant. Two poison doesn't feel like much, but two damage per turn adds up very quickly. I think, especially if you're facing Hexaghost, upgrading your Deadly Poison is essential. The Poison Stamp upgrade's a little bit more optional. It's two immediate damage and one poison, so kind of like an attack upgrade. It's plus three damage immediately but also one additional per turn. It's a nice little augment. In generally, in general, I highly recommend upgrading the damage cards. Whatever damage commons you end up taking on Silent, I highly recommend upgrading the damage ones in Act 1 so that you're able to uh, punch through the threats of the Act. We'll talk about these two defensive commons next, Deflect and Dodge and Roll. These are both pretty good ways to improve your block output. Deflect is a zero cost, slightly worse defend, whereas dodge and roll for one energy is giving you four block on this turn and the next. Both of these are a reasonable improvement in your defensive output with the Silence starting deck, but they don't really help you handle the most serious threats of Act 1. Against both the Gremlin Knob and the Lagavulin, these low-impact skills are going to really punish you. The Lagavulin will penalize your dexterity, so that this card does almost nothing, and the Gremlin Knob, of course, will only get angrier, and that's equally true with the Dodge and Roll. That said, if you're past your elites for the act, and you're looking at ways to block better against Guardian or against Slime Boss, I really like both of these answers. Deflect is nice because you can play it alongside the Slime cards to get them out of your deck, and Dodge and Roll is nice for blocking on two adjacent turns. In particular, uh, the Dodge and Roll upgrade is quite good, giving two block on both this turn and next for a total of plus four block. If you're going to take these cards, they are pretty good upgrades to invest in to make your uh, block engine better in Act 1 and Act 2. And these cards also get a heck of a lot better if you have any kind of interacting relic. Um, Dexterity, if, whether you picked up a footwork or, say, the oddly smooth stone relic, or if you have, say, an Art of War encouraging you to not play attacks, then taking the block cards of Silent in Act 1 can be a reasonable choice. That said, in general, I think Silent is looking to increase her damage output most of the time. 
And so I'm, I'm a little hesitant to advise taking or upgrading uh, Deflect and Dodge and Roll without some kind of interacting synergy, be it from a Relic or what have you. Outmaneuver is an energy generating card for the Silence. I think of all the cards we've talked about, this is the only one, or the first one, that does not necessarily improve the starting deck of the Silent. That's to say, if you take this as your first card reward, it is not necessarily going to make your second combat go better than the first one did. Kind of depends on the, the draw order. But what Outmaneuver is uh, letting you do is set up some energy for a future turn. This requires you to be able to draw cards that you need to play and um, draw cards that you can spend the additional energy on the next turn, which is the, the quintessential problem with the Outmaneuver, is that you cannot guarantee you're going to draw cards that you want to spend energy on next turn, at least not in Act 1. Now, if you have some way to retain cards like Runic Pyramid or well Aid Plans, or if you've got a lot of card draw, Outmaneuver can do some really cool things, and I think that makes it a pretty powerful energy-generating source in the mid to late game, but I do not advocate this card in the early game. Don't take it in Act 1, do not take it as your first card, and probably don't consider spending your upgrade on it, at least not until, uh, not until later. We'll skip over Pierce Wingwell for a moment, because Prepared is kind of in the same boat as Outmaneuver, so I'll talk about it at the same time. For zero cost, this draws one card and discards one card. Something very important to highlight here is that Prepared, in and of itself, does not allow you to draw more cards than you would if you had skipped the Prepared instead. Because while it says draw one card on it, you also have to spend one card draw to get this card into your hand in the first place. So a quick hypothetical example, you've got a five card hand, three strikes, and two defends, or compare to two strikes, two defends, and a prepared. The prepared draws you a strike, and then you're left with the same five cards, three strikes, two defends, but now you have to discard one of them. It's not a helpful effect in and of itself, but what prepared can do is allow you to activate discard effects, be it by discarding a status card you don't want to deal with, like a burn, by discarding a card to make Sneaky Strike free. It can make Eviscerate cheaper. And it can activate a whole bunch of relics. If you've got uh, Tough Bandages or Tingsha or uh, the Letter Opener, something that activates on skills or on cards being discarded. That said, once you have a prepared, the upgrade is pretty good. It upgrades to draw one more and discard one more. And this version of the card, the upgraded version, will allow you to draw through your deck more quickly. It will allow you to find the cards that you want to play on a given turn. It'll allow you to dig through and get to those upgraded attacks again and whatnot. So I really don't recommend a prepared unless it is coming in upgraded for free or if you're going to very quickly invest an upgrade into it. In that case, it can be pretty decent. Even going into, say, uh, Hexaghost, if you see a, if you have a Deadly Poison Plus, you see a prepared, and you have an upgrade available to you later in the act, that could be a good reason to take this card. But this is really one you should probably stay away from, unless you have a really good reason to, to lean towards it in the early game. All right, we're almost to the end here. Four more to go. Piercing Whale. This might be my favorite silent block card. I cannot believe this card is a common. This reduces the strength of all enemies by 6 on the field for one turn. It's a, a debuff and one with a couple interesting uses against late game bosses. In general, this card is an amazing Act 2 and Act 3 damage mitigation source because so many enemies in the mid to late game attack multiple times or so many encounters put you up against multiple enemies. In Act 1, this isn't quite as powerful of a card though. There's less multi-attacks. There's a few enemies with um, artifacts that will, the, the, the three centuries fight, that will kind of ignore this. It is quite nice against the Hexaghost boss on their multi-attack turns, and against the Guardian, who also has a four times multi-attack. Piercing Whale in both cases brings those attacks down to zero, so going up against those bosses, this can be a pretty good addition. In general, I really like a Piercing Whale towards the second half of Act 1, mostly to gear up for Act 2, because that's really where I, I think this card shines, is in Act 2. So you can take it once you've established yourself in the first act, 
but I don't recommend taking it for the first act, if that makes sense. You'll be better off with some upgraded damage commons, a deadly poison, or even an upgraded dodge and roll I think will often be better than a piercing whale wheel in Act 1. If you have a piercing whale, the upgrade is kind of nice. Plus 2 to the strength reduction. Um, can hit a lot of interesting breakpoints in the later game, but for the most part, Piercing Whale does its job whether or not it's upgraded. I don't often find myself missing the upgrade here, so I don't feel like it's usually worth the upgrade investment. Alright. Cover the last few damage cards real quick. Slice, Sneaky Strike, and Sucker Punch. Slice is zero cost damage. This recently got buffed to uh, six damage from five. So it's now the same damage as a strike. Silent has some pretty good access to card draw as a character, so zero cost attacks fit in pretty well with that kit. Slice is therefore not bad. I like it now that it's uh, got the better damage. It's a decent little addition, allowing you to output just a little bit more damage in those early fights. It's great against the Gremlinov, it's great against the three sentries, it's great against most of the early Act 1 encounters. And so I do recommend it as a, an early take. The upgrade on it's only plus three, so about the same as all the other silent damage commons. Uh, I would take it, I would upgrade this b beneath any poison card and beneath dagger spray, but it's okay. Nothing to write home about, but if you need damage, don't ignore this card. Sneaky Strike also recently got buffed. Used to be 10 and 14, now 12 and 16. It's a two-cost card, but it refunds the price if you've already discarded a card this turn. It's more awkward than you might think, um, since you you have to discard a card with your first card that you play if you're on three energy, or you won't be able to afford the initial price of Sneaky Strike. It's really easy to end up with this card in hand and glowing because you discarded a card, but unable to actually play it because you don't have the two energy. This is not a very good first card. The Silent Starter deck only starts with one discard card, the Survivor, out of 13. And that's just not enough to reliably make this Sneaky Strike free. But if you've taken a Dagger Throw already, or if you've taken an Acrobatics already, then the Sneaky Strike becomes a lot more interesting, a lot more consistent. And in that case, I do recommend. If you've got one more discard card than the starting one, and, and slash or, this is the only damage card you're being offered then it can put in some good work. Even if you have to pay the full two energy for this, it's allowing you to spend your energy on doing damage, which is sometimes all you need. If you do take a sneaky strike, then the damage upgrade is well worth it. This is a plus four damage upgrade, which makes it better than the plus three of slice or flying knee or dagger throw. And lastly, let's talk sucker punch real quick. Sucker Punch, I think, is one of the better common attacks for Silent. You'll note that it does the least damage, 7 and then 9 on the upgrade, of all of Silent's kind of straightforward uh, damage attacks, and that's because it has the best secondary effects, I think. One or upgraded two turns of Weaken is a really effective source of damage mitigation, not just in Act 1, but throughout the whole dang game. In Act 1, the Weaken is most effective against your Elites, particularly the Lagvalin, where it blocks for 5 per turn, or the Gremlin Knob, where it's uh, frequently 6 or more, and your Act 1 boss, where you're weakening either Hexagos to lower that damage output, or the Guardian. Both of those fights, Weaken saves you quite a bit because of how Weaken rounds. It's 25% less damage, but if the resulting number is fractional, then the remainder gets dropped off. So for example, six damage gets weakened down to four damage, which is a 33% reduction instead of a 25% reduction. So we can have a really, really significant effect uh, against multi-hit attacks in particular, and there's a few of those in the late Act 1. If you do take the Sucker Punch, I really recommend getting that upgrade down. It's a little bit better than your Neutralize upgrade, although it's attached to a more expensive card. You get two more damage in one week rather than one damage in one week on that Neutralize. Great! So, those are the Silent Commons. I think it's a really good pool of cards in general. A lot of very good ways to deal damage. A couple of ways to, to block. 
looking at the, you know, reflecting on this card pool, I'm actually surprised at just how few block options there are. Only four of these cards say block, unless you count the Piercing Whale. And really only, I think, two cards, Prepared and Outmaneuver, that I think are a worse choice than skipping on floor one. Thanks for watching, everybody. Next time, we'll be talking about the common cards of the Defect. Uh, again, let me know if you, in the comments below if you liked the video, and let me know what is your favorite silent common to take on Floor 1. Alright everyone, thanks for watching. Catch you all next time. Toodaloo!